Hello friends, welcome to Rajavala Education channel. In this video, we are going to see single phase AC generator. This alternating current generator consists of two major parts, namely stator and rotor. Here the stator has two components. One is stator core and another one is armature winding. This is a stator core. This is made up of uh, iron or steel alloy. It is a hollow cylinder and is laminated to minimize the eddy current loss. The slots are cut on the inner surface of the core to accommodate armature winding. It is called armature slot. In single phase AC generator, a single turn of rectangular loop PQRS is mounted on the armature slot. The field winding is fixed and inside the stator and it can be rotated about an axis perpendicular to the plane of the paper. The first main part is uh, stator, second part is rotor. It has a common shaft. This uh, common shaft is used to rotate the whole part of the rotor. Next uh, parts are slip rings. So yellow and uh, black parts are known as uh, slip rings. The slip rings are attached with the common shaft. Slip rings rotate along with the rotor. Rotor contains magnetic field windings. The magnetic poles are magnetized by DC source. The ends of the field windings are connected to a pair of slip rings. To maintain the connection between the DC source and the field windings, two brushes are used which continuously slide over the slip rings. The final part of the rotor is magnetic poles, north pole and south pole. These are attached with the rest of the rotor like this. Now we have an idea about uh, what is stator and what is rotor. Next, we see the working function of AC generator. Here you can see the combined parts of stator and rotor. The loop PQRS is stationary and is also perpendicular to the plane of the paper. When the field windings are excited, the magnetic field produced around it. Let the field magnet be rotated in clockwise direction by some external force. Assume that the initial position of the field magnet is horizontal. At that instant, the direction of the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the loop PQRS. So, in this case, the induced EMF is 0. The stator part is removed to explain the working function of AC generator. You know two directions. What are they? They are magnetic field direction and the force on the conductor. The direction of the force on the conductor. If you know these two values, that is two directions, you can find out the direction of the induced current on the conductor using right hand thumb rule. What says right hand thumb rule? For that, you have to stretch out your right hand of thumb, forefinger and the middle finger perpendicular to each other. If forefinger shows as the direction of the magnetic field and thumb shows as the direction of the force on the conductor, then middle finger shows the direction of the induced current on the conductor. For clockwise rotating the poles, the conductor appears to be anti-clockwise. So, for PQ, north pole is moving upward direction. So, the conductor appears to be downward direction. So, thumb points towards downward direction. For SR, the south pole is moving downward direction. So, the thumb should be upward direction. For PQ, the middle finger shows inwards and uh, for RS, the middle finger shows outwards. 
okay so the induced current flows inward for pq for rs it is outwards therefore the current flows along pq rs so we can put positive sign here and a negative sign here because current flows from positive terminal to negative terminal here uh, emf is zero that is uh, when t is equal to zero emf is zero because uh, magnetic field is perpendicular to the conductor now the field magnet rotates through 90 degree the magnetic field becomes parallel to pqrs the induced emf across pq and rs would become maximum since they are connected in series emf has or added up and the direction of the total induced emf is given by fleming's right hand rule by applying a right hand thumb rule thumb indicates the direction of the motion of the conductor with respect to the magnetic field for clockwise rotating poles so the conductor appears to be rotating anti clockwise for pq north pole has to move clockwise uh, direction so the force on the conductor that is uh, thumb should point uh, towards left side because it has to move anti clockwise direction according to the right hand thumb rule here um, for rs the south pole has to move clockwise direction so the force on the conductor so the thumb should point towards a right side next the middle finger shows the direction of the induced emf for pq it is inward direction for rs it is outward direction therefore the current flows along pq rs for the rotation of 90 to 180 degree the emf becomes uh, zero because uh, magnetic field lines are perpendicular to pq rs again we have to use right hand thumb rule for pq the south pole has to move upward direction so the force on the conductor that is thumb point towards downward direction for rs north pole has to move downward direction so the force on the conductor that is thumb points towards upward direction we know that uh, according to right hand thumb rule uh, middle finger shows the direction of the induced emf for pq the middle finger points outward for sr middle finger points inward so current flows along sr qp so we can put a positive sign here and a negative sign here the field magnet becomes again parallel to pq rs for the rotation of 180 to 270 degree rotation of the field magnet the induced emf is maximum but the direction of the current is reversed this is what we explained according to the right hand thumb rule the previous one so the current flows along srqp again we use the right hand thumb rule here to find out the direction of the induced current here uh, the pole has to move a clockwise direction so the force on the conductor should be anti clockwise direction so thumb should point uh, towards left side for north pole it has to move upward direction that is clockwise direction so the magnetic uh, field direction is clockwise the force on the conductor should be anti clockwise so here uh, thumb point towards right side for pq the middle finger points uh, outward direction for uh, rs the middle finger points inward direction so the current flows again s r q p on completion of 360 degree the induced emf becomes zero so from this observation we can say from 0 to 180 degree rotation the induced current flows along pq rs and uh, 180 to 360 degree rotation, the induced EMF flows along S or QP. So it is clear that the induced EMF is alternating in nature. 
Now EMF is zero since our magnetic field lines are perpendicular to PQRS. When it is uh, rotated from 0 to 90 degree, EMF becomes maximum in positive direction because field lines are parallel to PQRS. Now it is rotated uh, from 90 to 180 degree. Again, it becomes a perpendicular condition. So field lines are perpendicular to PQRS. So EMF becomes 0. Next, it is rotated from 180 to 270 degree. Again, it becomes parallel to PQRS. So, now EMF becomes maximum but in negative direction. Next, it is uh, rotated from 270 to 360 degree. The EMF value again becomes zero because uh, field lines are perpendicular to PQRS. For one rotation, it shows uh, positive and negative values. That is for uh, 0 to 180 degree, it shows a positive EMF and 180 to 360 degree, it shows negative EMF. So, the current flows in PQRS is alternating current. I hope you understand the concept very well. Thank you for watching.